actually had no idea about. So I decided to take from. Sorry, it's just bleeding. That's a nice first slide. Thank you, yeah. Uh, I worked the hardest on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and so. So. Oh no. Stop it. Um, so I did mine on Alan Turing when when we were talking about AI, he was like briefly mentioned. Um, and I read the book on him. It's called I don't know, the movie they called it the Imitation Game. I think they just called it like biography of Alan Turing in real life. So here we go. I, I guess it's a lot better than the movie. Um, I mean it's a person's life, so a lot more detail. Yeah, there was a lot more to it. In the movie, I'll mention it in the slides, but the movie was like so full of shit on a lot of stuff. So, uh, early, <laughs> yeah, so don't, <laughs> I use these as bullet points, I don't <laughs> actually read off the slide. So, <laughs> uh, basically he started off like, I guess, any enigmatic mathematical prodigy starts off, like he goes to school and his parents are like, wow, you're like smarter than the average bear, so they send him to like a nice little private school, um, because they're rich, of course, like as most are. Um, <laughs> so basically he like made this friend, he was kind of a little dick, like all through high school. Kind of what? <laughs> Say it again? Just not a good guy. Yeah. Uh, he was very arrogant. <laughs> um, made a lot of like outlandish remarks. Uh, so he didn't have a lot of friends. And he did make one friend though that he, I guess, fell in love with. Supposedly. I think they made a way bigger deal out of it in the movie than they actually did. It was basically he had a friend. Later on, briefly in life, he's like, I think I loved this guy. He was 13. Like. We don't know what we love at 13, but yeah, so there's your homoerotic love story. Um, however, his friend did die. Oh, his friend died? Yeah, his friend dies when he was in high school. Um, disease or car accident? It was a disease, yeah. So that was really sad, and he was like his only friend. Um, and so Alan Turing took from that like a really big love for astronomy and materialism. Not materialism in the sense of like Hollister t-shirts. <laughs> materialism in the, in the sense of like he believes essentially in the prospect of like not creationism, but that we're all connected spiritually. Uh, like there's a spiritual and materialistic connection between like all of our particles that create us. I don't know. I mean, you can Wikipedia it. That was essentially his religion. Um, so that led to that. Afterwards, he attended Cambridge, of course, as any smart British person would do. He's also a Huh? He's also a Yeah, but that's for, like, the writers and <laughs> stuff. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then there's, like, the University of Leeds, but nobody really talks about them. Um, come on, don't do this. Okay. You skipped them. Yeah. So he wrote some papers. I'm not going to even try and pronounce that. It's a problem. Uh, he solves it later on in the story. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote some other boring shit. And I didn't even bother to read it. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop laughing, it makes me laugh. <laughs> so then he went to Princeton in afterwards for his postdoc. Uh, so he, he was a graduate student at Princeton? No, he was a graduate student at Cambridge and he was a postdoc student at Princeton. Uh, so when he came to Princeton, he really got into uh, cryptanalysis, which will come in handy later on. Um, so essentially, he was good at mathematics, computer science. I don't know what computer science was in the 20s, there were no computers. Mm. Um, he was a philosopher. I dispute he didn't do sh jack shit in philosophy. Um, he just no, said he believed in material. I don't know about that. Right? In my book, most philosophers don't do jack shit. So um, I rank Turing high among <laughs> He did as little as possible, so he was truly the greatest. Okay, come on. 
Uh, so during World War II, they were like, hey, this guy's really good at computers and math and cryptanalysis. That's like all we need to like crack this Enigma code that we couldn't seem to figure out. So he was made in charge of Hut 8 at Bletchley Park uh, during the uh, World War II. This was like the government code in cipher school. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see here. This is the one that was dedicated to crypt the uh, Navy cryptanalysis, which was so that basically what it was was there was this little tiny machine that the Germans were using, that, and they used code to like you know send off where the ships were going to go, blah blah blah. Um, and we couldn't crack it; nobody could crack it. They spent years on it. Uh, so this is what this guy's in charge of is cracking this code. If we can get this, we know all the because I mean we could hear it, we could hear what they were saying, but we couldn't understand what it meant because of this Enigma code. Did, didn't, didn't the British or the Americans capture a German Enigma machine? Yeah, that's what he. That's what he's in charge of. So they have the machine. Okay. But okay. they don't know how to. Oh, okay. Then they didn't know how it worked. Yeah, okay. they don't know what, how to use it. Um, so they created the Turing machine. They he created the Turing machine. Uh, he did this about I think it was two years. Two years after he got there, uh, it was basically like him creating the Polish bomb machine. So there was... The what is the Polish bomb the, the Turing machine. He just, he tweaked it. Essentially, it was a theoretical machine that could crack any code. Um, so, but it was all theory. They didn't have any other funding for it. So what Turing does is he comes into the government. He's like a big fan of this like bomb machine. He's like, wow, perfect. I can convince the government I need this. Well, the guy that was in charge of him, of Hub A, was like, no, we don't want to give you the money, just, you know, crack the code like any other human does with pen, like, paper and pencil. So Turing wrote a letter to Churchill directly asking for the government funding to make this machine. Um, so Churchill responds, approves the funding, um, and so basically this guy uses the government to create his scientific project, which, I mean, it was kind of sneaky. <laughs> Well, that's where you can get done. I mean, you can't. Where are you going to get the funds if you don't have to get the government? Well, but that's what I mean. They weren't giving it to science. They were giving it to uh, during war. Like during the war, that was the big thing. So he kind of used it to his advantage. Sorry, let me just get through this. <laughs> Is that right? Nope. Ah, go back. You guys are not seeing what you need to be seeing. No! Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. What the fuck? Come on. Yeah, we're put into the end. <laughs> so much less than the first one. <laughs> so that's a touch screen that you got. Yeah. It's nice sometimes when it's not doing this shit. Can I need a picture? I need to get you a picture. No, this is Alright. Right. So, they get the Turing machine to work in 1939. Yay. Uh, this was kept, kept hidden for two years. Um, they didn't want anybody to know about it. They didn't want the Germans to know that they had cracked the code, of course, because then they could just redo something different. They'd have to go through the whole process again. Um, so, basically, when they discovered this, they could listen in on anything that the Germans were doing. However, they didn't want the Germans to know that they knew the code, so they couldn't save everybody. So they couldn't say, okay, we're going to stop this ship, this ship, and this ship, because then the Germans would be like, oh, how are they figuring out where we're going? So they had to kind of play the cards right, and it was a huge gamble. They were like, we can save these people, but we can't save these people, because then they'll know we cracked the code. So they got to play God for like two years. It's really horrible. Um, Basically. The amazing thing is that they actually cracked it in 39. That was when the war started. Uh, well, like, Germany was kind of taking them off. Well, the, the, they got the machine to work in 39. I don't think they got the coding to work until 40 or 41. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it was a little while. But essentially, they say that they kept the war from going on for two more years. Because, like I said, they were just calling shots, figuring out who they could save and who they could. Do you guys kind of understand why? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. 
So after the war, uh, Turing landed a job at the National Physics Laboratory where he designed the automatic computing machine. Don't ask me what that does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry for my language. <laughs> I wrote this at 1 a.m. Uh, so basically, he was doing really good, and then he was like 41, <laughs> I think. What's a tweet? <laughs> me on the colloquium. I, <laughs> I would really spice so, so things up. So a twink is a male prostitute? Yeah. No, no, no. no. no a, male, a homosexual male prostitute. He's like the smaller <laughs> male. Like you have like the two guys. He's like the small one. Like the pretty one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, I've like, learned a new word. I'm yeah. always happy to learn something new. He's dating this guy, um, and then get this, I love this story, it just cracks me up. So this guy's like literally robbing his house, and uh, so Turing calls the cops on him, but then the burglar was like, dude, they were doing like homo shit, and I saw it, and so they arrested Turing instead of the guy that was no, I know. robbing him. Poor. Yeah, it was pretty horrible. So then he gets arrested, and then like they chemically castrate him. I don't even want to know what that is like or what that entails. You can figure it out for yourself, I think. <laughs> um, they don't let him go back to the United States, um, which is a really cute spot to mention that he had literally, after he figured out the Turing machine, he went to the United States to multiple different uh, colleges and was like, hey, here's this enigma code that we cracked, here's how you do this, blah, blah, blah. So he gave all of the U.S. this information when he still had his government card, when huh. he was still in the government, and really helped them out, and then they were just like, finger, you know, F you. So, so he, he helped them build computers. Yeah, he was not really... Not simply helping them with code. No, he, he did a lot with the U.S. He corresponded a lot with them. Um, and then when they found out about this, they were like, he can't come back. And he was like, cool, great. Um, so at the age of 41, he died of cyanide poisoning. You were right, actually. Now they're looking back into it. They don't think it was suicide anymore. They think maybe the government might have killed him. By the way, MI5 and MI6, um, in some British shows on television, they have a good reputation. But in fact, they, they weren't um, nearly as confident or as uh, easy as The I don't know. Well, he died. That's all we know. Mm -hmm. and he was like 41. So that's really sad because he was really smart and pretty. Um, <laughs> fun little quips. So he used to do this really funny thing where he would take his coffee cup and he'd handcuff it to the rails when he'd leave to go to the bathroom or something at HUD 8. And people always mention this. They were like, he handcuffs his coffee cups so that nobody steals his coffee. Maybe they were like squandering during the war for coffee. I don't know, I thought it was funny. He was a distance runner. Um, he ran to London. It was about 40 miles from London. He would commune there every other weekend or so and then run back after he was done. That's, yeah. Uh, he's 11 minutes under the Olympic silver medalist, so he almost qualified for the Olympics, but I don't think he. He just didn't make it past this guy. Uh, so his smile... Well, there might not have been any Olympics during the war. There were. There were? Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember the black guy did it and all the Germans... But that was like, before the war. Oh, that was? Oh, uh, well, I don't know. All I know is he didn't make it. Um, even with two hours and 46 minutes, I will tell you that was not my time at all. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, if you watch the Titanic two times, that's my time. <laughs> uh, he often told wretched puns and really shitty math related jokes. I don't know who does that. <laughs> that's just, that's horrible. Why would I don't, I know, right? 
No wonder he didn't have any buddies in <laughs> high school. So sad. Um, at a young age, his teachers often told him he was not that intelligent because he didn't read a lot of like classical books. I don't think you should base somebody's intelligence off of how many Jane Austen books they've read, but I'm no teacher. Well, by classic, they may well have been Latin and Greek, actually. Maybe. I don't know. They didn't like him. Probably because he was smart. I like to feel like that's why people don't like me. Um, oh, here's we a We all like <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so here's this really horrible story. When they were like playing around with war and you know calling the shots, essentially there was one point where one of the five people in HUD 8 had a brother who was on one of these ships and they heard the Germans saying we're going to go destroy this ship and the guy's like we've got to save my brother and Alan Turing who is an emotional robot at this point was like no we can't because if we save your brother they're going to know that we know the Enigma code and they're going to change it. So. Um, they let that one go, so this guy's brother died. He could have saved him, but it would have ended the whole scheme. Which was really horrible. <laughs> yeah, here's Alan Turing. Oh, I think I did miss a slide. One second. I did You saw that. Oh, yeah, you did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, here's his, did yeah, everything. let me just we mention. We did that one also. Okay, well, there's a little part here I need to mention so it matches the picture. Mm -hmm. um, there was a girl, she was the only girl in HUD 8. Her name was Joan, or Joanne, however you read the book. Um, <laughs> they were briefly engaged. He, like, asked her to marry him, and then she one night was like, Nah, I think you're gay. And he's like, You're right. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> So she was still like she was still down for it. She's like we can still get married and just be friends, which like really sounds horrible. But you know she was yeah. So she broke or he broke it off. He's like no, I can't do that to you. So I guess he kind of had a heart sometimes. So here's her. I would have not been gay for her. I think she's gorgeous. But you think she's like, gorgeous? Yeah, she's beautiful. I don't think she's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I would have happily married that lady. This is Alan Turing. He's pretty cute too. Uh, this is him when he's young. This is him trying out for the Olympics. He's pretty short. He doesn't look anything like Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> this is HUD 8. These are, I think it's her working on the code. That's them working on the code. Cute. Uh, this is the machine that he made. Well, not he one. This is a replica at some museum. Uh, P.S. They thought this wasn't working the first go around, but one of the ir the wires had just been unplugged. Uh, somebody kicked it, so they were like, "Oh, your machine doesn't work. Fuck you, Alan Turing." But then he wouldn't plug it in. It was beautiful. So yeah, that's it. I don't know. Doesn't really look like any computer I've seen these days. No. Oh yeah. Okay, so here's the uh, kind of okay movie. <laughs> Um, I say kind of okay because they got the story all wrong, but Benedict Cumberbatch is the actor, who I think is also the love of my life. Um, <laughs> he, yeah, he's <laughs> so there's Which one? Cumberbatch? Cum <laughs> Cumberbatch. Cumbly Birch? Everyone knows it. Cumberbatch. That's the book. It's huge. It's like this thick. That's some dense reading. A lot of boring, but there are some cool parts. That's. I don't know, I just found that on Google. It's him like being held back, looking all angry. There's a movie. This girl really got to play Joanne Clark. I think she's not as pretty. Um, that's him running. I just really like pictures of Benedict Cumberbatch not wearing a shirt, so I figured I'd throw that in there. <laughs> well, <laughs> close enough. I think that's a Tumblr edit too. I think it's really. Let's just zoom in on that. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> Never mind. The end. Okay, great. Thank you. I love that. That was recorded. You find out whether he, if you ever find out whether he was murdered or committed suicide, um, why don't you send emails to all of us? Okay. Will do. Okay, maybe Ivy should go next because you have to leave early, right? I do, but my laptop just, it said, there's a problem. We're resetting, so my computer's going back up right now. I don't know what happened.
Mine's pretty quick. I can go. Well, I don't care who goes next. It's up to you. There should be plenty of time. All right. Let's do it. All right. Um, we got this. Are you also going to use the projector? Yes. Will you also make this laugh? Um, probably not as much. <laughs> Wait, you guys were laughing? I thought that was some gross sobs. <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay, yeah, not sure well, should I go get Tom? Huh? It'll be fine. It's all good. I'll turn some cuts. It's dead. Are you glad you stayed for presentation or not? Yeah. <laughs> Very. Hey, a good presenter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but what were you saying about where you were? I thought maybe you need the lights to stick next to the next one. Don't put this in the archives. I don't know. Things are poor. Can I get Tom? Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 You I guess thought, I learned a new word. You thought I knew my heart on that one. You were like, SPS secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla liked it. You liked it, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is A plus worthy. I think you were talking about something. Okay, maybe it is, should work. You were just using the HDMI. We might have to fight now. Cayman, were you doing it wirelessly or were you connected? I was connected. She's getting to the was oh, here. Was it HDMI it or was something HDMI. else? It was the HDMI, yeah. Was it HDMI? Mm-hmm. Were you using one of the white oh. things? No, I'm using the adapter. She's got no. Oh, yeah. She's rich. There is a, a button that you push. <laughs> he pushed a button somewhere. Yeah, it should be a source button. Um, Search source, yeah. I was like, they were just screaming. Sometimes I'm funny. I'm sure you know to get Tom. I'm sure you can read it. It's a bunch. Alright, let's show the issue one more time. I need to know that this I just read it on the light. Probably like a podcast and it's just a straight line. No, no there we go. Oh, dear God. What and then just like do it on famous people. Oh my God. <laughs> Give it to them straight. Oh, there we go. Just hold the sign. Oh, uh, oh no. Uh, okay. Well, it's close enough. Uh, all right. Come on. This is a ghost that shows up in Zappa. Okay. This is your eight. So maybe it's yeah. Like I think it's got just a, twisted or something. Or if you hold, the, which one? Do you have a connection over here or also? No, I don't. It's only there. Uh, just one. Does it work if you hold this no, part in place? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna be the only one who's like that. I'm gonna look like a weirdo. Sweet solidarity. <laughs> this is really a disgrace that it's so hard to get things going. We had a faculty meeting a couple of weeks ago. And four faculty members trying to get the thing to work. Oh my gosh. I love when we have like visitors come and we're just like, we're sophisticated okay, we're gonna try this, but we can't. I'm going to go ask to him. I like it when there was like a graphic to an open house. Yeah, and I was like, oh my goodness, can I take five minutes? I'm like, we're not getting any grass. It's alright. It's alright. I keep checking the wire. I'm like, where's my math grade? Yeah, I've been refreshing the blackboard like every two hours. Let's see if my grades are up. He's got one. I know what one of them is. The 271 grade came I got my C. Yeah, yeah that was like yeah. ice cream. I'm so proud of you. Me too. When were you guys just asking for fun? Let's go get ice cream. And I was like, oh, I'm you. Crying. Oh, 
finishing the pressure for the 2D icing model. <laughs> Is that your dog from Yellow Band? Did you I see that the final was up? The answers? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not Okay, what are you it. connected? Right. Sure. Um, I think HDMI. I mean, it was working and then it was spazzing and then it okay. back up again. We should swing it now. Maybe a face tattoo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <We're> Teardrops. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so don't go that way. Alright, so you have uh, you have a. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, is there another one? It's working. It's just going to get tattooed like real. Oh, god damn it. I always wanted that. Not Rihanna's face. Just your boob. And then I want to get the Mike Tyson tattoo. There we go. Maybe. Alright, I'm not gonna touch it. Nobody knew. Alright. I want to get a tattoo that looks like there's always like a smudge of food on my face. Okay. <laughs> so, I made a fun little thing of the Monty Mouth album. Oh, no. No longer. Did you? Alright. Did you? Alright, right, so. Um, so, it was the one we talked about in class. Let's try the other one. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. a two-door problem um, where you choose a door and then you're shown one of the ones that doesn't have uh, the prize behind it and then you choose again and if you uh, see so you choose a door so you're going to choose the center one it's going to show you one that doesn't have the prize and then you choose one of the other doors and you choose the center one again and that one and so if you do this um, over again it'll keep uh, track of your stats on the bottom, and you'll see that if you do it a couple times, it matches the statistics that we were uh, seeing in class. Mm. Okay. But yeah, so you can see it pretty quickly. It does the uh, two thirds to one third okay. um, for either one. So that was just a fun little thing. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, so it's fun to. All right. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, Thanks, Tom. <laughs> and then the other guy we got is. Oh wow, that does not display well. <laughs> All right, we're not gonna look at me. What we are gonna do is. So um, basically, what I did. Let me see if I can display it. Looks good. Okay, here. So um, what I did is, um, so we had the, uh, so I did two different types of fractals. There was the uh, caster fractal, is that how you say it? The one? The caster, the one where you took out the third. Oh yeah, the um, or canter set. Canter, there we go, canter set. So um, I did a canter set and then I did the snowflake um, one. So in this, what you can do, so this will... Uh, and so this is your Python code? Yes, this is Python. Um, and so what I did is, uh, so here this number is going to specify how so many iterations. What is Snowflake? Is Snowflake something you wrote? Or is yeah, yeah, yeah. These are, these are just all functions that I wrote. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so and, the and that code looks more like, it looks kind of like C. Did you write it in C? And no, I, I wrote it. This is all Python? This is all Python, yeah. Okay. I, I originally learned in C, so my coding style is a bit like C. Um, <laughs> but, so, uh, so yeah, so the caster set I did recursively, um, and then the snowflake I didn't, but, uh, what mm -hmm. I did, so this first number here is going to be how many iterations of the snowflake it's going to do, and then, uh, these last few numbers, uh, the first one is, uh, the starting x and, uh, the end x for uh, the first line for the Maybe I should do something set. about this shade. Yeah, huh? no problem. 
Oh, it is down. Yeah, it's all right. Um, I can just move the graphs over here. I can move this guy over so you can see it better. Um, and so it's going to have the range of the original line, uh, the first line it's going to start with. And then this is going to be um, the size of the line it gets to before it stops. And so the last line, um, it that's the minimum size it can be. So here and run this guy. Oh, this isn't gonna work well. Okay, hold on. So it actually animates the snowflake. Um, I'm wondering if I can. Oh, I guess yes. Okay, I'm probably just gonna mirror so you guys can see this easier. Relax, any way you do it is fine. <laughs> So it's going to show the stuff like as it's building up. Mm -hmm. And then it's hard to see when it gets to some point. And then so it doesn't go through the case. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Wonderful yeah, title. Cantor. 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 Yeah, I couldn't remember that name. Um, but yeah, so it uh, splits up the third each time until it reaches at some point. Um, and so you can fiddle around with the parameters. Um, so like the snowflake, we can do less iterations, so let's say let's do two, and then we can make this bigger, let's make this like point or so, you know, just fiddle around with parameters and you can, yeah, so it's only going to go to that extent and then, yeah, you around so you get different results so yeah Ready? yep that's it so it's cool that you um learned some learned a lot of python mm -hmm. um, yeah i do uh my middle son you know said that python and mathematics are a good job yeah i do uh do analysis in python that's what i do research and then yeah I've been I do I'm a CS finder so I've been doing a lot of job recently which is what I did the um, uh, Monty Hall stuff in you want to get Tom can I get Tom or Tom the HDMI um it's probably gonna have to switch sources because he switched it for mine oh so mm -hmm. or uh, oh, there we go. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Yeah, the issue my cable yeah. is just kind of crap. Liar. Okay. Not working. Okay, so tell us what you're doing. Okay. Um, I made a random star cluster generator. You made a what? Louder, louder. Random star cluster generator. So, like, that works a lot with random numbers because it's random. But, um, the, the real, real good thing about this, I, I use the Markov chain Monte Carlo method to do a best fit for the, if it'll load, it takes a while because my laptop's off. There we go. So it finds the best fit curve for these, and that would be useful for like finding the turnoff point for a cluster, like the age of it. I mean, like in this, you, you determine the age of it, so it doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, that's, 
That's basically all it is. And I guess I can show you the code for it. If it wants to do anything. Yeah. That's the best bit for that. Um, so, yeah. So when you age the cluster, some stars go off the main sequence. So like this first bit is just checking to see if the star is on the main sequence. And if it's not, then it takes it out of the data points that are being analyzed. Um, and then, so there's two different graphs that are being fit. There's a mass luminosity plot and then a temperature luminosity plot, which really work the same way, but yeah, so in the case of the mass luminosity, like it sets initial parameters and uh, the length is the number of parameters that goes through the number of iterations. Um, and there's there's the chain for the Markov chain. Um, and then the likelihood of it is right here. And I'll determine the acceptance rate. And it's a nice little program. Um, it generates a random set of parameters based off of the previous set. And then it tests the likelihood of those parameters working against the likelihood of the previous ones. And if it's greater than a certain random number, then the next step in the chain is the new uh, set of parameters. Otherwise, we keep the previous parameters and then that's just what the Markov chain will have to follow. That is. And so, yeah, that's, that's my project. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, who, who's next? I, I, I think I'm the last one. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't have time. So, you, you're saying what? I didn't do one. I didn't have time. Oh. <laughs> sorry. You came up. You watched <laughs> that train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't have a computer, so I, I can't entertain you. Well, you can still entertain us. Well, I think you might need help plugging my paper into the HDMI cord. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So, um, my project was pretty simple. Uh, here's your paper. Here's yeah, this no. paper, if someone would like to look at it. Um, it's pretty simple. So, uh, I, was, I was intrigued by the chaos theory. Yeah. And I wanted to... Um, get some good examples in real life of the chaos theory and uh, how chaotic that really is, how difficult it is to predict. And uh, while I was searching through different examples, um, I came across the double pendulum method, which is a very basic um, version of the chaos theory. And um, I really like it because it's kind of like a weather. I could just say an example of chaos rather than chaos theory. Okay, of chaos. So a good, um, let's see here, so a good, real life application of this is weather and how hard it is to predict weather. So I'll just go through this. So the first three uh, figures I have here, um, the first one's at, uh, so at the top of the paper, I've written down the parameters that entered into the code. And I'm only changing the angle that the green, um, that the green string has with the x axis. So I think the top one's at 1.49 radians uh, to the x axis. And what about the where do you put the blue one? So the blue one is at the is at one radian above the x-axis. Oh, you radian. always start the blue one at one radian. Yes. Yeah, so for the for the top box here, it has the list of parameters. So it has the weight of them, what the gravity is, um, what the lengths they are, what their starting angles are. It also has how much time I'm doing it for. But the blue one looks to me to be an angle greater than the angle. So those are their uh, final positions there, oh. after 100 seconds, not oh. their starting position. Sorry oh. about that. Okay. So as you can see here, so there's two graphs. Uh, this, this first graph is um, a figure of what the double pendulum would look like. And then the second figure in the left column, right column, right column, <laughs> don't make fun of me. The, the, this one in the right column is a representation of their uh, equations, the double pendulum equation, which has a lot of signs and cosines, I'm not going to repeat it now. But 
as you can see for these first two graphs, they're very similar. Um, this first one, the green angle is 1.49, the next one's 1.5. But then you get to this third graph, which is 1.51, so it's the same difference, but then you look at it and it's just way out of whack, has, has nothing to do with the previous two. Mm. But then if you look over on the next page, the fourth one, it's 1.52, and it's oddly symmetric compared to the previous one. Is, is it oddly what? Symmetric. So if you look at, if you look at its graph, it's um, the way it looks on the graph, and then also the way it looks in its figure for the equation plots of the sine cosine equation that they have. Um, it, it looks symmetric about the middle, which is interesting for me. And then the last, so that, that one right there, I think, shows that um, chaos theory is difficult to predict because even if you're incrementing it by tiny steps, mm -hmm. you think there's a pattern, and then all of a sudden, bam, it switches. It totally, it totally like, juked you, you know? <laughs> so the last one, I really, so after doing that, I was like, okay, what else can I do here? Because I'm, I'm pretty interested in this stuff. What else can I do? So I wanted to ch check out how small can I get to really change what the graph looks like. And so for the final two figures that I have written here, um, I changed the angle by a thousandth of a radian, which is really small. <laughs> really small, like way smaller than a degree. And as you can see, it, it vastly changes the graph. Um, is the figures are very different. So uh, the code I used, I never wrote. I'm not, I'm not as smart as some of our other colleagues in the room. <laughs> but um, I did find this code, and I was able to change the parameters. And uh, this code was provided by Rob. I did his last name, Rob Morris. Um, but yeah, that's what my project was. I think um, this helps clarify why predicting weather is so difficult because the more degrees of freedom you have, the more chances you have of chaos, really. A, a little it's tiny also the nonlinearities. That's true. Nonlinear. Um, so chaos is nonlinear. And then um, there's another one where it is uh, if you have random constraints and you have more randomness in it, then it's impossible to predict what it will be. But um, chaos is interesting because if you have enough information about the initial conditions, you can accurately predict how it's going to turn out. And so that's the interesting about weather is that we just don't have enough initial conditions to be able to accurately predict it because there's so many initial conditions. But we have enough to be able to predict it pretty accurately, like pretty good. So that's what I find is interesting. So perhaps in the future we'll get more accuracy there and be able to make cool graphs for the weather channel. So that's what my, that's what my project is. And I'm very nervous because there's a camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get nervous. <laughs> It's not there. If you want to say anything. Yeah, come on, anything. I don't know what to say. Just go up and talk about space and shit. What do you, why, <laughs> go up and tell us what you're studying and what you want to do next year. Get an A plus, Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't want to be talk. I don't. Talk like, about the moon. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> look, look, oh, you, God. You'll get an A plus anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what, well, hey, now? Oh, man. <laughs> Hey, we worked, we worked a solid, long time. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna know. Yeah, 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 but that means you learned something. Oh yeah. So did you? That's the whole point. You don't want to twink. I learned what a twink is. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe I'm going down to history for that. <laughs> All right. Well. I like All right. So we can up. we can quit and. Have a nice summer and yeah. look both ways crossing streets. <laughs> <laughs> I feel ready to try to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take this one.